Ah, I really appreciate all the help you're providing us and the work you do really clean, really good, excellent work. So I do want to appreciate that about you. And so I was like, you know, Leah could help me with this and I know it will come out top notch. So, Oh, thank you. I mean, I want to share about this encounter I had with the Lord back in late 2015. And that's what I want to talk about. I don't talk about it a lot. I used, I did talk about it when it happened for a little while. And it was really like in Isaiah 6, it was encountering God. It was, the Bible talks about God as a great and a terrible God. Um, it talks about knowing, Paul says, knowing the terror of the Lord, I persuade men. Well, I have, you hear everybody talk about all these encounters with God and it's lovey-dovey and the big marshmallow man in the sky. I had an encounter with the holiness of God that um, really shook me like I'm 20 day, 20 days into a 40 day water fast. So I felt like the Lord was like telling me now to, to talk about this and put this on our Beth testimonies channel and have helped define and bring me back to a place where I was willing to do really pastor. Cause I was, um, I knew I was called the pastor, but I didn't really want to at that point. I was like, you know, booey God. Um, and so he kind of shook my life Ooh, quite a bit. <laughs> he kind of shook my life quite a bit. And that was like, that's what kind of got me was like, put me on this journey to where I, where we are today. I heard that you had an amazing encounter with the Lord. How about you share about that? Wow. Well, it was several years ago and it was really interesting. I was in a time in my walk with the Lord that was not the best of times. I was wrestling with a lot of disappointment. I had believed God for several things that instead of going in the right way, it felt like my life was becoming a train wreck in slow motion. Mm. And um, after having several years with the Lord, we're really just seeing him prosper me in so many areas. It was like anything that I touched just wasn't working. And so I had was in this season and the Lord had called me to a long fast. And um, I have a history of fasting throughout my walk with the Lord since my early 20s. And I hadn't done too much for several years. And I went into this, I uh, was planning a 40-day water fast, which I um, embarked on. This was around 2015, somewhere around the day, 21st or 22nd day of the fast. We're at a prayer meeting at the church. We're having a evening prayer meeting. And I had this encounter with what I would call the holiness of God. And it, it lasted for about 30 minutes. Wow. And it was terrifying. Wow. Tell me more. Yeah. The during this this moment where, where, where I, I don't even remember exactly how it started um what was going on in the meeting meeting maybe someone was leading worship or um i just remember all of a sudden having this vivid awareness of how holy god is wow and how other than that I myself am. I'll read this passage and then give you a chance to respond. But it says in Isaiah 6, 1, and I'm not saying I'm Isaiah for all those out there that are going to wonder, well, you're saying you had this encounter with God, you know. We believe that gifts are not for today and that these things don't happen anymore. I'm not special. I'm a simple guy who loves Jesus, who is filled with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the power of the Spirit, uh, walking with God in a season where I am disillusioned and literally just happy to be on the sidelines and just want to live out my life my way. So anyway, in Isaiah 6, it says in verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. 
Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings. With two, he covered his face, and with two, he covered his feet, and with two, he flew. And he called to another and said, and one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And this is the verse that I'm anchoring my, my story to or my encounter or experience to. And that is, and, and Isaiah writes, and I said, woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. I'll take a pause there. It was it was interesting. One of the things that I hadn't heard a lot of teaching on, and we're both believers and part of the, the experience, the American Christian experience, and I don't know your experience per se, but I it had been a long time since I had heard about the holiness of God. Mm. It's been a long time since I'd heard pastors teaching on sin mm -hmm. and repentance from sin. Right. And the scripture says some things about God that I I, I, I kind of, in my heart that day, because when this happened, when this moment happened in this meeting, remember I was about halfway through my water fast and I I just was weeping on the floor, just asking, telling God over and over, I am sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was like the conviction of God like came on me in such a way that it was very uncomfortable. And this was just like going on. And I remember being in this meeting and I'm like, I wonder, <laughs> like, like, when is this going to stop? Like I'm the one leading this meeting and there's all these other people here, not a lot, but you know, it was, it was um, maybe a couple dozen people in the room that might between one and two dozen people and just weeping, seeing how holy and perfect God is, how beautiful God is right. and how wretched and my, my lack of self-awareness of, of who I really was in, before God outside of the mercy of Jesus. Right. Yeah, I've done a lot of episodes on this topic about holiness. And, you know, people think if you're holy, you, you can't have an enjoyable life or have fun or, you know, God's just going to give you all these rules. And I just wanted to break that misconception because that's not true. You can live holy and still enjoy life, still have a good personality, still jokes, still, you know, still have fun. But it's crucial in order to have an intimate relationship with God, we have to humble ourselves, surrender, and pursue holiness, especially in this day and age where, you know, we live in this crazy demonic culture where, you know, they're calling good evil and evil good, you know, discernment. There's so many things that if you don't know your word and if you don't pursue Jesus, if you pursue religion, you're not going to make it, you know, it has to be a relationship, a friendship with Jesus and intimacy with Jesus and the closer you get to God, the more you want holiness. It's not something that's a turn off or an obligation. It's something you actually desire because it draws you closer to God and makes you more like God, give the godly character, you know, and it's, it's really it gives you supernatural peace. Yes, yes, yes. You make a lot of really powerful points. And then I'm not saying something someone else said, and I'm repeating it. I I literally have been through 10 years of refining fire. And so I am a little tough on believers that say they're Christian and they don't live the lifestyle and their, and their life doesn't match up and their attitudes don't match up, you know, because I've allowed God to do that necessary purge and that stripping of everything. I know that life I'm living that life, you know, and it's not a, like a prideful thing. Like I'm better than anyone, but it's really, I know the difference between being a Christian and living surrendered, and it's a completely different life. You know, it's it's so powerful what you're saying. The 
a lot of there's this lower level living that a lot of people live at and they imagine that there's this the, the earthly things that satisfy us and god is good and he's kind and he's merciful and you know we he gives us great food to eat and beautiful weather and those are great things to enjoy but they're there like you said there's there's things that are so much more satisfying so much deeper and that's where it's interesting you talk about holiness and th this thing really marked me because Paul Paul writes in the book of first or second Corinthians five, he talks about having this, knowing the terror of the Lord, he persuades men. And he's, he's referring to this idea that, that scripture even talks about this great and this terrible God. And, and outside of Jesus Christ, I mean, I realize I have nothing in that moment. It's like I was naked not from a clothing perspective, but it was like, I have nothing to give God. I so much, Marcus, who with, you know, maybe I thought my my sin shortlist at the time was a few things, right? Because I mean, I'm married, I'm, I'm living fairly right by standards of, of, of Christian standards, but seeing God in this, this holy moment and realizing that, I bring nothing to the table that that I am not doing God any favor right. by surrendering to him. And it really became a turning point in my life to get me back on this, this track. And we talk about this idea of encounter and encounters are really an invitation. And, um, and of course, I continued with this fast I was on, which was kind of like a, a, a preparation for several events that took place after that, which ultimately had me installed as a lead pastor of, of a church now, now that I'm lead, that I'm leading now uh, right. several years later but it's this um this idea of holiness that you talk about and and really what this was for me was this encounter with a with a holy God that um really shook me to the core in a very healthy way and very life-giving and I won't say it was all bad I mean I'm sitting there weeping and crying and crying out for the mercy of God. But but the, the holiness of God has this beauty of God attached to it. Um, that, that in this moment that I had experienced, it's just the beauty, the beauty was so eclipsed by by the holiness that that I just it was so overwhelming uh for that 30 minutes. Walk us through what exactly happened with the details. Yeah, I mean, we were, I, I think, I think it's, we were there, I think someone was leading a worship song or something, you know, focused on the song, focused on the Lord singing, and this is the best I can re recollect, and, and then all of a sudden, it's like my eyes, my spiritual eyes were open to this reality, and seeing this through my spiritual eyes, literally, I've fall to the ground weeping and weeping and wailing and weeping loud crying asking god for mercy crying god forgive me i'm sorry i just remember saying i'm sorry so i don't know how many times i said it. i just kept saying it over and over god i'm sorry god i'm sorry it was like the conviction of my sin like was all like poured out on me in a moment of time and it was absolutely overwhelming and i see god and how different god you are so other than me you are so far above that you that, 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 that the human being the human experience you know we we have this idea of I, I not we i can't speak for anybody but me i have this idea of who who god was and how big he, he is and how holy he is but uh, the, the idea that I could even conjure up in my my own mind wouldn't even be a five percent of what this moment seemed to uh, reveal to my own heart in, in that that thirty minutes or so on that carpet crying out to God. Wow! So you had a supernatural encounter. Yeah, yeah that's a heavenly the, encounter. I mean, that probably, obviously yeah. was not just a normal worship night. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for summarizing that. And that, that that's it it's what a lot of Christians talk about with encounter. And a lot of Christians really they they go after encounter. And I, I love encounters and they're they're great. I don't live for encounters. I when I was the Bible says Paul says when I was 
a child. I thought like a child and I, I behaved like a child. And the more I've grown in, in, in the Lord, th those are not as valuable to me um, necessarily. They're, they're important. Um, I, I guess maybe that, that one, uh, I was like, okay, Jesus, that that's, we can take a break now after, after that <laughs> one. Maybe that's why, you know, I don't want to, I'm not downing, I'm not downing it in any way. I've, I certainly uh, enjoy the the presence of the Holy Spirit, the manifested presence of God. It's really important to me. But yeah, it was a supernatural encounter with the Holy God. Uh, God, I believe it was God the Father letting me know how um, where I really was and um, who He really was, at least a glimpse of it, and um, my desperate need for His mercy and you know, fasting is an act of humbling ourselves, right? So it was like, like God saying, okay, you're taking this step to humble yourself. I'm going to give you a glimpse of in the supernatural realm of, of who I, who I am and let you see who you are in light of that. I mean, I think I could summarize it like that. Yeah. Wow. That's awesome. How can other believers encounter God in that way? Well, I want to answer that question in light of something you said earlier that was really powerful. And it goes back to God's nature and God is a holy God and we're designed, right, to have relationship with him. We're designed by him to fellowship with him, not in our own um, righteousness through the blood and the blood sacrifice of Jesus. Well, the Bible says, he who is forgiven much loves much. And when you have a gospel that doesn't help people see right. their need for salvation, then the love towards God will be little because there's this perception, almost like that we're, we're doing God a favor right. by coming to the Lord. And, you know, the Bible does say, and you, you you alluded to this, pursue holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I believe there is a call coming in the earth, not only to culture, and I, I appreciate our call to righteousness in our culture, but it's odd to me because I don't see that call necessarily in a in large part in the church of jesus christ you said it earlier you know you're a pastor you know other pastors you know just me not being a pastor but watching other pastors and paying attention there's not a lot of pastors that are going to speak about repentance sin or holiness those are topics you don't want to bring up but they're the very topics that we need especially in this day and hour right where it's getting darker and darker and the you know the enemy's just you know running these streets i say you know and the fluffy, you know, not to mention any other pastors, but there's there's a lot of fluffy, you know, sermons and messages out there. And they bring the numbers, they bring the finances, they bring the security, right? But they don't bring the righteousness. They don't bring the holiness. Pastors need to be more fearless. We need fearless pastors in the pulpit and godly leaders in government, you know, because that's the only way that things are going to change because some people are not going to go through the consecration and all they have is their Sunday morning and their pastor. And if that shepherd is not leading his flock and where there's a, a call to action to repentance and surrender and living set apart, then that might be the only Jesus they know. Or we get in your word. Like, I love that you talk about getting in your word a lot. I mean, you really do hone in on that. Like we need to be in our word. It's not an option anymore. You know, <laughs> it's like, a lot of people want that. They just want that surface. They don't want any conviction. They don't want anyone to tell them that they're living wrong, you know, that they need to change mm. anything in their life. They just, <laughs> they want their golden ticket to heaven. And when the rapture comes, they just want to, you know, Jesus take care of everything. And we're just going to wait for the rapture and <laughs> watch Netflix until that happens. And <laughs> they don't want that, that call to action that it takes, <laughs> you know, they don't put in the work. Very, very, um, insightful comments responding to your question about someone wants to have some sort of encounter with god god is not an event and i, I wouldn't recommend that you 
prescribe the encounter or expect a certain type of encounter. Although right. this one did lead me on a journey where I really uh, went after just getting everything, all the things in my heart that needed to get right, um, dealing with um, disappointment, bitterness, unforgiveness, mm. and all those things, right? And just um, critical attitudes and hopelessness and even depression depression is really a form of pride expressed um mm -hmm. i mean there's a there's a spirit of it but it's usually attached to it's attached to the sin of pride when you look at um really at the roots of what what it's all about um, i didn't know that i've never heard that that's an expression of pride um wow although anxiety it scripture says i think i don't remember where the anxiety is is kind of the source of it but that's that's we digress so we can get back on track but i would I would really recognize God is not an event. He's a person or a relationship to be pursued. Yeah. So living our faith in the light of pursuit, in the light of long, play the long game. You know, I, I read my Bible for 30 days and did these spiritual calisthenics and I didn't have anything happen. Well, right. good, do it for another 30 years. Right. And in that journey, you know, perhaps God will will, will will reveal himself in a certain way or or, or he might not. Um, he might have a, a different um, type of experience for you to have with them. Uh, but we walk by faith, not by experience. Right. So um, having and, and really um, you talked about the word. The word is central to our faith. Uh, if, if believers actually spend time in the word. Right. Most most days of the week, this world would be different within if if oh, yeah. eighty percent of believers read their Bibles five days a week for twenty minutes, it would just be a matter of months, and the world would change. Oh yeah, do you know who David Barton is? Absolutely. Yes, he's amazing, right? So I went and saw him actually last year at an event. And um, I just remember my mouth dropping when he said this, but he said only 6% of Americans have a biblical worldview. That explains a lot. <laughs> it does. If you don't read your Bible, you don't know your Bible, you don't vote your Bible, you don't live your Bible. What can you expect? You know? Absolutely. 6%. Yeah. Anyways, I just thought I'd drop that on you. It shocked Jesus. me. Yeah, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No <laughs> one comes to the Father except through him. Yeah, really the word of God. It lines up with truth, and we have to know the word of God. Spending time in the word is spending time with Jesus. Right. So it's not just this history book or some book that you might think is boring or, you know, just some cool book of miracles, right? It actually cultivates a relationship with Jesus. I mean, it's so much more. Absolutely. And Deal with the compromise and the sin mm, in man. your life. Because our sin separates us from God, and people don't teach that in general. And, and an old covenant understanding and new covenant understanding are, are, are a little different. Right. But in terms of the new covenant, it takes us outside of Christ. So we're not experiencing what John 10, 10 talks about where she came that we'd have a life and life more abundantly. We're not experiencing and that abundant life may or may not include a, a fancy car and a nice house, right. but it is going to include the righteousness of God, the peace of God and the joy of the Lord that Amen. is more valuable than any amount of money. It's going to put a fire inside of your spirit. That's going to cause you to want to share who Jesus is and the realities of the kingdom of God um, as depicted in the scriptures and in the new covenant. Yeah. So true. What would be your call to action for the church? My call to action. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand mm -hmm. to turn to God, to live a more consecrated lifestyle, to deal with the idols in your home of entertainment and sports they're not wrong necessarily, but they're often given the wrong amount of emphasis. Um, serve God, not mammon. Amen. That's true. You got to strip out a lot of things of this world. <laughs> That's for sure.
<laughs> I tell people you can't slay demons when you're entertaining them. <laughs> that should be a t-shirt. <laughs> you know, I think a lot of Christians, they see God and the devil almost like they're in a boxing ring, toe to toe. You know, we hope God wins this one. It looks like a tie. Oh, it looks like Satan's winning this one. But the truth is the devil is defeated and just the name of Jesus makes demons shudder. So <laughs> there's a, a, a song. My wife will tell you about a song in Africa that says great big God, itty bitty devil. That's right. <laughs> so, yeah. But so many Christians, there's that fear attached to, you know, I, I hope God comes through or, you know, just not walking in their authority. Well, the Bible says it. the righteous are as bold as a lion. It doesn't say the compromised are as bold as a lion. Mm, come on. Your boldness comes from your, you're walking in a place of holiness. I mean, that's why you're able to be bold. Oh, it's, yeah, there, there's no boldness without holiness. One of my favorite verses, I was just reading it again yesterday. It says, the righteous have no fear of bad news. Their heart is steadfast because they trust in the Lord. That's right. Thanks so much, Leah, for taking the time to allow me to share my story. I pray it brings some encouragement. Thank you for being such a great pastor and leader. What you're doing is inspiring me as well. And I appreciate that. Oh, thank you. Keep your, keep that fierceness and that edge. <laughs> the boldness. <laughs> we need it. <laughs>